Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be working on a MacBook that appears to not be turning on. We're going to figure out what's wrong with it, why it's not turning on, fix it, and explain the process that we use to make it work again to all of you. If you're curious about getting started in MacBook repair, there are links down below that I highly suggest you check out. There is a link to a repair wiki where for every single model of MacBook, you'll see a detailed list of potential problems and solutions to how to fix that particular problem in that machine. You'll, it has a guide on how to check for liquid damage, how to use an ultrasonic cleaner, and many other things. You'll see a 150-page link to a document that goes over how to fix boards at component level. You'll find a link to a forum where you can get paid support, and you'll find a link to a paid class if you, are in, if you run a business doing this and you want your employees to be able to do this type of work and you want them to get some type of training with myself and Paul and everybody else. Um, that being said, we are going to be done with the shilling and get on to the board repair. Uh, I'm going to be ignoring Twitch chat today because people on Twitch can't spell my name right. So we are going to be punishing Twitch chat by pretending it doesn't exist. Let's be honest, I probably would have done that anyway. All right. So this is the MacBook. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug it into the power supply. Once the battery is unplugged, of course, see how much power it's taking. And as you can see, it is taking... M. Where is my power supply transform? Okay, as you can see, we are stuck at zero amps. So I'm going to take the board out, we're going to take a look at it, measure some things, and figure out if we can make it work again. Now before I get the board out of the case, can anybody here guess what it is that would cause us to have no green light? What are some of, what are some of the prerequisites necessary to not have a green light in the charger? Does anybody remember? No, this is an old broken DPA mic that I have kind of a, for the person who asked that, I kind of glued the end together on because everything was falling apart on it. I, I broke down and I bought another one of the DPA mic to replace the one that got stolen. I was debating whether or not to do a class that day because I got two hours of sleep from going to that conference in Chicago. And I probably should have delayed doing that class because doing that class wound up uh, costing me uh, the 2000 bucks plus worst of equipment. But lesson learned. Lesson learned. Don't overwork yourself. It's a lesson. Actually, I shouldn't say lesson learned. It's a lesson that I'm never actually going to learn. It's a lesson that I... I mean, who am I kidding? If I haven't learned it by now, I'm going to be dead and not have learned that lesson. Cable isn't making a good connection. You sound like a customer. No. Not even close. Not even close. The quote, it's just a cable thing. That, that's pretty much a translation for I want the repair to be free. This is just hopeful thinking that the repair be free. No. Why is, what is a prerequisite for the green light? What is a prerequisite for a green light? Pee pee bus. Nope. Damn. Seven years of free education and nobody gets it still. Oh man, I'm going to cry. I'm going to actually cry. Oh. Okay, I'm just going to not read chat because reading the chat is actually depressing. Wow, that is one depressing chat. Okay, I'm just going to pretend you guys don't exist. Yeah, you guys don't exist. Okay, so let's move on to fixing this board. So let's go over what's necessary to get a green light in the charger. Okay. Breaking up. One moment, just going to set up my screen over here. 820-3476 board, there we go. Okay. So let's go over this from the very beginning. This is the charge port over here. This is my charge port, see that? Charge port. So let's just go over the charge port and the schematic on the board view. Charge port is this thing over here. Now the charge port this. You got three things at the charge port. You got 18 volts, you have ground, and then you have adapter sense. Now, in order for there to be a light in the charger, you need adapter sense to speak to the system management controller in the computer. So you have adapter sense over here, adapter sense, that's going through this chip where it becomes sys1 wire, and sys1 wire is a line that goes straight to the SMC. See this? Sys1 wire, 
This is going into a chip called U5000. U5000 is the system management controller. So you are not going to get a green light until the charger has spoken to the SMC. The SMC speaks to the charger. It's like, oh, you're a charger. You're a MacBook charger. Okay, okay, turn on. That's how you're going to get a green light. Now, what do you need in order for that to work? Well, you're going to need that circuit to work. And what are you going to need for that circuit to work? Let's make this a little bit bigger over here, shall we? Now, adapter send doesn't get to talk directly to the SMC. It doesn't get to. U7000 is kind of like a bodyguard. As you can see over here, you have adapter sense, which when you measure it is a 3 volt data line. You also have 18.5 volts, and it's on this connector where it's very easy if somebody is drunk and being an idiot to have the wrong thing go in the wrong place. So let's say you have some drunk person, like the person who's saying PP Bush D3 Hot is the first rail that should show up in my YouTube chat, uh, trying to plug their computer in. And they are so drunk and so wasted, like, bleh, 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 they're on my MacBook. And, you know, they're, they're plugging it in the wrong way. What do you think is going to happen if 18 volts shows up on the 3 volt data line? Bye-bye, <laughs> SMC. No more SMC. The SMC will be dead. So there is some protection over here. That's what this is. This chip is going to say, oh, are you a 3 volt data line? Sure, come on in. Are you 18 volts power? No. This is like a bodyguard. Now this chip needs power to turn on. Where is it going to get its power to turn on? From this chip. Where does this chip get its power from? pp 3 v 42 underscore G3 hot. So pp 3 v 42 underscore G3 hot is the first rail necessary in order to get a green light in the charger, which is a prerequisite for the rest of the system turning on. Green light in the charger, then system power rails turn on. Now, PP3V42 is not just required for the one-wire circuit over here to work, it's actually required for the system management control to work. That's right. That chip, the SMC that's going to speak to the charger, also requires PP3V42 underscore G3Hot to turn on, as well as the circuitry that turns on the SMC. That is the first power rail that you need in this computer in order for it to work. I have been telling you guys that for seven years, and you still don't even know. I swear, I'm just going to give up and do you... And I'm, I'm just going to give up and do real estate videos at this point. Like... Where? <laughs> Nobody's been watching this shit for eight years. Oh my god, this is so effing depressing. Anyway, so let's take a look at this board and try and see if PP3V42 underscore G3Hot is there. Yo, I'm going back to doing real estate videos. F this. <laughs> I'm doing real estate videos. Steve is actually going for his realtor's license. Because he said, you know, that we were talking about this and I said there's specific principles that have caused this as a business to become popular. It's not just board repair. It's doing something that nobody else, solving a problem that wasn't being solved, uh, you know, exposing something within a corrupt industry or disrupting a corrupt industry, uh, d doing it honestly. You know, there's something to that. There's something to like the things that we've done that have all been successful or that have been popular. There's these common traits. And he, he wants to become a realtor because he believes that we would kick the crap out of the market here. But the thing is, it's not it doesn't really matter who the salesman is. It matters who the landlord is because it's the landlord. At the end of the day, if you advertise a space as 2,000 square feet and it's actually 1,000, then that just means it's going to be double the price. At the end of the day, the consumer doesn't really care. They're paying the same thing, and the rates are insane. But Steve wants to become a realtor. He said it's like 90 hours of study and then some exam, so he would actually like to, to try and do that. I don't know where that's going, but it sounds like an interesting idea. <laughs> And I, I, I really think that you can't really change that unless you actually become a management company or own the buildings. And I don't know how to own buildings in New York City without being born a billionaire. So pp 3 v two is going to show up in a bunch of different spots of the board. And we're going to measure it. I would measure it right over here on this inductor. Now remember, this is the first rail required for the machine to turn on. Edit that noise out. Okay. So let's see what we get. What do you think we get? What do you think we get? So we're going to measure pp 3 v two underscore G3 hot. And we get zero volts. All right. Oh, zero volts. And oh, what happens when you bring the microscope over? Gee, I wonder what you're going to see when you bring the microscope over. Ouch. Ouch. That is no good. That is dead. That is bad. What are those three caps? They're right next to the circuit that creates PP3042. It just happens to be corroded. Well, let's see on the schematic in the board view, shall we? What are those three caps for? C7090, C7091, and C7092. These are input caps on the circuit that turns 18 volts from the charger into pp 3 v 42 underscore G3Hot for the system. So let's take a look at what's going on here. This is the 18 volts from the charger over here. 18 volts from the charger. It's going to come through here. Now, this is the circuit that turns the 18 volts from the charger into 3.42 volts. Again, 
input over here, 18 V5 DC in connector, and that's coming from all the way up here where DC in connector is, where the charger is. Output V out, 3.425 volts. I would zoom in more, but Paul Daniels' software apparently requires that you pay in order to get more zoom. Are you serious? Look, you get infinite zoom out in Paul Daniels' software, but God forbid I try to zoom in anymore, you can't. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a little trial button that shows up. It's going to be like an in-game in -game add-on or something. I got to pay an additional 50 bucks to get more zoom. Look at how much you're able to zoom out in the software. Look at this. Like, who reads a PDF like this? You get infinite zoom out and no more zoom in. Who needs this much zoom out? This is ridiculous. What the... Oh my god. Anyway. So this is going to take 18 volts in and turn it into 3.42 volts out. Now this is the input cap. You have little input capacitors over here and they go to ground. Now I'm going to take a wild guess over here. I'm going to take a wild guess. I'm going to guess that if these capacitors are liquid damaged that they're shorted to ground because that's how capacitors often fail. They short to ground. They don't disappear. I'm also going to guess that if these caps are shorted to ground, that this resistor is blown because too much power would have been sent through it. Let's take a look at R7020. R7020 is right here. And as you can see, it has a hole in it. It actually has a hole in it. Let me just adjust the camera over here. Let me get me off the screen so I can see the camera settings where I am. Make it look a little nicer. So what happened here? Those capacitors in the, over here got liquid damaged. These caps got liquid damaged and shorted to ground. When these caps got liquid damaged and shorted to ground, you didn't have 18 volts throwing through here anymore because 18 volts is going straight to ground. Ouch, charger shorted to ground, charger turn off. And when you were sending way more power through this than what was expected, this little 47 ohm resistor, which can really is only designed to take, look what it says here, like one third of a watt or something like that, it blew up and exploded so that your charger would not be sent straight to ground. So if you were to just replace these caps that were liquid damaged, nothing would work because this resistor would be blown. And if we simply replace this resistor, just looking at the top side of the board, it would repeatedly blow because we wouldn't have fixed the short. We, can't, we need to fix the short in order to fix the entirety of the system. And that I'm going to start doing. <laughs> It sure is cutting out from time to time. It sure is. That is me not making you listen to me sniffle. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> okay. We're going to heat this up. Get that little resistor out of here. GTFO. And there we go. I'm going to clean that pad up. That has some disgusting solder on that pad. That is pretty gross. So, watch what we do here. Now, I'm scraping, mildly scraping, gently scraping so that the nasty solder on that pad goes onto my ball of solder and flux to make it beautiful. Then what we do is I'm going to wick it to ensure that none of that nasty, corroded blob of shit stays on my board. Give me the... 
gonna be the Michelangelo's Church of Solder Joints right here. It looks like there's actually a... Uh, yeah, something's stuck on this pad. Oh my, okay, that pad was just... Yeah, there's a little bit of the resistor was stuck on that pad. That pad had actually come off the board. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of modification here. It's gonna include jumper wire, because see, that was not a flat pad. That was not sitting flat. That was very, very suspect. And I don't trust that that would have lasted. You helped inspire me to start my own business and keep teaching me lessons along the way about how to do it right. Thank you. Well, thank you, Stephen Norcup. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hopefully you're one of the people that knew which power rail you needed for the one-wire circuit to work. Yeah, if you see something that don't look right, poke and poke and poke. Because for all I knew, I could have been soldering on top of a corroded piece of pad that was barely lying there. That I wouldn't want to trust is going to work later. So I have this. Beep. Teeny bit of wire in there to reinforce. And to be clear, that is already making a connection. Wait a second. Where's my thick boy wire? I want thick boy wire. That's thin wire. I want oh, wire. A oh, type of wire I can be proud of over there. Again, to be clear, that's making a fine connection as is. But since we have a shorter pad than what we had before, I just wanted to have a little bit of reinforcement. If this thing gets dropped off of a building and the SSD is dead and the screen is broken and the CPU's balls are popping out, I at the very least want to know that my element of the PP3V42 underscore G3 hot pad that I worked on is still functional. That's very important to me. It's important to me and my stubborn pride. The rest of this machine could die for all I care. Let the part that I worked on last forever. There is no carbon left from burning resistor. It's all gone. Just like your hopes and dreams. That one hit hard, didn't it? Blow that into place. If 
five, four, three, two, one. And beautiful. It's exactly where it wants to be. And watch this. See the plastic connector next to it? Zero damage even though we used hot air. See that? When you're using your hot air, you don't want to focus on the heat in the air setting so much as where you're pointing it. Where you're pointing it. How you use it is more important. How you use it is more important than how big it is or the settings on it. So always technique. Technique is what matters. Very important if you have a connector nearby that you don't want to burn, but you need to use really high temperature because the board has a high thermal mass. Or if you're a nerdy board repair technician with a tiny penis that wants a sex life. Okay. Now as you can see, these pads are really, really burned under there. I can't just solder on top of those. That's not, that, you know, putting solder on top of burned pads is not going to do anything good. So I'm going to do a little bit of scraping. Again, you cannot solder on top of shit like that. Do not solder on top of corrosion. I'm not soldering on top of corrosion right now. I'm using the iron as a tool to help me scrape. And you don't scrape with a micro pencil or with tweezer tips because you break them. But if you have a larger tip like this, I don't really mind it. What I want to do is I want to get rid of all the junk over there. I don't care if I move a little bit of solder mask again. We're not carrying a lot of data on these around over here. This is 18 volts charger voltage. I want to suck up all the junk on the board right on my iron. Yeah, okay. Those pads were done for. But just because those pads are done, again, I'm not going to solder on top of those pads. That's just disgusting. There's no, there's no reason to do that. Now, the thing is, you won't really see it. It'll look prettier than what I'm about to do right now. But just because it looks pretty doesn't mean it's good. I care about making a good connection. I don't give a fuck if this wins any beauty contests. We want a nice, clean connection. We need to win no beauty contest. Now this wick is also very kind of, it's rough. It's goot wick. It's very rough and gravelly. It's going to be good at picking up a lot, any of the junk that may be sitting there. And obviously if this was an iPhone board, I could not wick like this. I would probably be through the entire thing by now different techniques for different devices. Okay, now we're at the stage where I would feel safe cleaning it off a little bit. Like so. See that? Now that I can solder to. Also notice there's a little bit of a void in the resistor under it. Anytime you're using wick, you should take note of the stuff around it and just check those joints. That joint is still technically going to conduct electricity. It's just not something that I would feel good giving back to a customer. The resistor right under those pads over there. We just fill that in right now. No big deal. We put, watch like so. And beautiful. Next, apply a little bit of solder to this and we're going to put the three caps on. So we're going to steal those three caps from a donor and then when I put those three caps on this board is going to work again. You'll see. You'll see.
Those caps are going to flow into place, and it's going to be amazing. Amazing. Also, everybody say hello to Mr. Terrible Fire. Terrible Fire has been viewing now for about nine years. He was one of my first subscribers back in the day, and we appreciate our early subscribers that have stuck around. Now that's not flowing in right. I don't want to heat up the area too much. I'm using hot air. I'm just barely placing it there, and then I will flow them into place in a moment. And they will flow exactly where they want to flow. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of flux and watch how they dance in a place exactly where they wanna sit. It's gonna be beautiful. It's going to actually be beautiful. It's gonna be like watching the Disney World fireworks for Y2K. If you missed that, this is gonna be the next best thing. Watch how all of those caps just kinda move into place perfectly. Yes. I don't even care if they're touching. Let them all touch. That's fine. I don't mind. I'm all touch. Now I'm going to let this board cool off. We're going to use a special patent pending technology here at Rossman Repair Group called Rapid Cool Technology. I'm just going to put that up against the fume extractor. And then once it cools off, I'm going to turn it on. And you're going to see the fan spins in the first go. Blatant plug from Mr. Paul Daniels, a software from the shill that is Jim Hook. Jim Hook is shilling Paul Daniels' software as a fellow Australian. You cannot trust those people. You cannot trust people that shill software that doesn't have zoom in, but has infinite zoom out. Oh, here we go. Fan spin. For a second, I saw I saw it stuck on 15 milliamps there, and I'm, no, no, that's not happening. That's not happening today. We ain't having any of that. As you can see, we have a fan that is spinning. Hopefully, you were able to follow along with my explanation for all of this. That's it for our board repair today. I'm so happy that you guys were able to make it and follow along. Now, I just want to go over some of the resources that are available for all of you if you don't know how to do this type of work and you'd like to learn. The first resource that we have is a 150-page training guide, which you'll find linked down below, that goes over a lot of the basics of, of, you know, just basics of electronics, what is a buck converter, how does a buck converter work. It really just tries to take stuff like this and turn it into really idiot-proof slides like this so you can visually see exactly how the circuits work. We have a repair wiki that you can see over here where I go over all the different things that can cause a machine to have certain symptoms. So, for instance, Let's say you have 100 to 200 milliamps in the charger. What could it be? Running slow, what could it be? No image, what could it be? No backlight, what could it be? Batteries not recognized, what could it be? And so on and so forth. The third is we have a paid forum here, which is paid if you want live support, but is free if you want to search. We have tens of thousands of threads. The MacBook board repair forum has over 9,000 threads. There's a chance that somebody else had the same problem that you had that has been solved, and we do pay somebody a full-time salary to answer these questions. And the fourth is that we have a paid in-person class for anybody who wants to send employees of their business or who's, who has a business and wants to be doing this type of work. We do have a paid in-person class. And last 
lastly, we have a free workshop that we do from time to time. This one is not paid. This is completely 100% free. You can bring in things that you've screwed up, bring on things you want to work on, bring in things you have questions on, and use any of the equipment that I have over here. The, all of this equipment that you see behind me is stuff that I bought so that I could do more of these free repair workshops. We have three stations right now in addition to mine. One, two, three. And once I finish getting this one set up, we will have four. So four people will be able to work on their projects at a time and get instruction from uh, me or whoever happens to be there that day and that is completely free so that's it for today and as always i hope you learned something and thank you so much for making what we do on this channel possible and if you are an expert level technician and you would like to be a part of this you would like to help people learn i would highly suggest that you consider contributing to repair.wiki repair.wiki has lots of entries from lots of really really smart people um, we are starting to get entries from a lot of other people other than just me who actually, you know, people that actually have a brain. So 99% of the MacBook section, like 99.9% .9 of the MacBook section is me. But the iPhone section is really starting to look up. In the beginning, it was really just old stuff like the iPhone 7. But now we have the iPhone 8, 10s, 10R, all these ones. Look at how detailed these guides are. This is crazy detailed. And I am really, really happy that we've got people like uh, Jesse Cruz from VCC Board Repairs contributing to stuff like this. We've got other people looking to contribute. And I would like to do this for all devices. I love and respect what iFixit is doing by trying to make a more repairable world. At the end of the day, no shade. Not trying to show any shade at iFixit. Lots of the repairs that they're showing you how to do are the basic ones. Like, you know, here's how to replace an assembly. Here's how to replace a battery. I'd like to create a resource that is really focused on how to do the more advanced repairs. The advanced repairs are required nowadays because the easy repairs are often not economically viable. Replacing a $650 assembly on a device whose resale value is $600 makes no sense. Having the knowledge to be able to replace, you know, figure out which, you know, one cent component is the one that's broken in my device, then makes it something that's economically viable to do. And I'm looking to cre create this. I'm looking for talent. So if you're somebody who is who is talented in the independent repair business, you busted your ass to learn how to do a repair that is very popular, that a lot of people should know how to do, and you, you just want to be able to contribute to something like this, again, I'm open to paying people who are contributors. Let me know. Lewis at fighttorepair.org is my email. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.